from the Flip Floppy project in Kenya, where we are building a big recycled plastic sailing dhow. In this video, we will show you how we used our 3D modeling to uh, um, make prototypes like this, but much bigger, um, to calculate how the different parts um, will weigh and what parts are, there are, and um, yeah to plan our interior design of the boat. So why do we even need a 3D model? Because usually the boat builders here are used to work without a computer, they just go ahead. Um, but as this is a recycled plastic boat, and it's, um, it will be a big one, even though we've built one small prototype already and it worked, um, the big one will come with much more challenges. So we have to get more people involved um, to solve those challenges because it will be from recycled plastic. And to communicate our plan and to enable others to engage and get involved in the process and, and share their expertise, we need those 3D models to actually share it with people in different countries and to allow them to make tests on the shape and the different properties of the boat. So now we'll show you which models we um, made, that we are making. So basically, well, what to start with? I mean, so obviously I'm a lecturer at Newcastle. Um, Newcastle University, we've, we've run education and research in naval architecture for a long time, maybe over a hundred years. There's been wow. marine technology taught in Newcastle. And these days though, you know, my job is to get involved in interesting things to do with boats. So I like to play around with boats. That's really, <laughs> that's really the sum total of it. My interests, I suppose, are around around safety and also around like sustainable use of materials. Um, and I suppose also linked with that is kind of the sort of, you know, learning from traditional heritage, like craft boat building, where actually you have huge amounts of expertise and people like me spend our lives using equations and trying to do lots of clever mm -hmm. things, I suppose. But actually sometimes we forget that actually the real expertise is in the actual making and building and operating a boat so so basically I, I say we I'm using the royal we I, I've done very little so I have <laughs> three three students who worked as interns over the summer and um, they basically I just gave them a project where me and Simon cooked up the idea of getting a model made of the flip floppy or the kubwa I think it was Katrina I think it was your rhino model or your, your exactly which is great actually you know what you made my life really easy because we just took the whole shell and we just stripped all that out and it was actually really easy. Then Simon had, uh, the, Simon had the big job of doing the CAD work to work out how to make it because we print, we've 3D printed the model. And um, really, I just gave the students the idea of, well, here's a boat. It would be really interesting to see what, what kind of naval architecture performance tests we can do on it. Just throw, throw, throw equipment at it and see what we can measure. We've got a computer model of it as well. So we've got a piece of software. It can do, it can measure the stability. It can measure the way that the vessel will move in the water. It can look at, it can do some predictions of the drag resistance. So it can, you know, it's a piece of calculation software. So we just used it in its basic sense, just to kind of fundamentally work out where the, where we think the weight should be distributed. How do we think it sits in the water and linking that to the stability of the vessel, especially, you know, it's, it's transverse stability, how it rolls. Once we did that, we have used it in, you, I think you've seen the video of the towing tank. So we ran it in the towing tank, which is a long stretch of water and it measures the drag of the boat. The model of the flip floppy is currently at the end where Harry and Becky are standing. And when they press go, the model's going to run quite slowly down the tank and we're going to video it with various cameras that we've set up and we're also going to measure the drag 
using the instrumentation on the carriage, which is fitted to the monorail that runs over the top of the water. But we managed to get enough time to get a few runs to get some different speeds, so we can build up a, a resistance profile. And we did a few wave tests just to kind of see what the boat looked like when it ran through some waves. So I think we only we only tickled that bit. You know, we just did a little few tests just to get started. And then we moved on in what another tank we have, which we can put the model in the tank and we can run waves past the model. And we've been tracking its motion. So we have some motion sensors that we can use to track the motion. So we can measure, for example, the, ro the, the roll period. Yeah, so we did some motion tests. And then finally, we've done a lot of stability measures as well. We've done what we call an inclining test, which is essentially moving a weight around on the boat. You, you probably do something quite similar on the real boats. You can move around and you can see how stable the boat is based on the movement of, the, of, of a weight or the movement of a person. Here we have the flip floppy in our little blue tank which we use for stability and inclining experiments. And what we want to show you is what happens when weight is moved around in a boat. We've put this little plastic tub in there to show what happens when we add some fluid, some water, except we're gonna use orange juice, so it's nice and easy to see. All right, and we'll pour some, water, pour some juice in. And we're, not, we're hoping not to see very much happen. So what we can see is it still remains nice and stable. So here we go, we've adjusted all the weights. What we see is that the motion of the boat is now much, much slower. So the roll period, the way that it rolls through the water is much slower. And that indicates that the stability is less good and we're gonna make it even worse. Now the problem with water on your deck, keep going Harry, is we get an effect known as the free surface effect where the water starts sloshing around in the boat. We can see that happening now. Okay, whoop. So this is a test. That'll probably do, Harry, you know, because I think we've reached a really interesting condition known as a lull, where the water is sloshing over the boat. We can see it's still just stable, but it's definitely not stable when it's upright. The boat actually wants to move from side to side. So that's a really interesting condition. It's almost capsizing. So just to finish off, we capsized the boat. So we no, <laughs> no, deliberately. Okay, so all we've done, we've left the weights exactly where they are, and we've turned this box round by 90 degrees. So it means that when the water sloshes from side to side, it's going to move further outboard and create more healing, and we think it might capsize the boat. Keep going, Harry. Becky's holding on. Are you going to let go? Okay. Whoa! Whoa! I mean, it's quite scary, actually, because it, the reality <laughs> is it shows you what happens if you get it wrong. Like if you, yeah. if, you lo if you load your boat wrong, you capsize fast. You know, it's not a slow thing, it goes. Yeah, we were all excited, but actually we're showing a pretty disastrous thing happening, which is sinking down to the bottom and it does <laughs> actually go down. So, so yeah, but that's what we've done. So I've got a feeling it's the first time a traditional DAO has been tested in that way. So even though we've not, I don't know. I mean, it, I might be wrong. I haven't seen anything in literature, in academia, you know, in university speaking. I haven't seen anything like that. So I think just in itself, it's, it's a nice thing to do. It's something to contribute, you know. This is a probably a, a new design. You know, it may have some... It's a new design, yeah. New vision, <laughs> yeah. So we have to do yeah. One key question that would be very interesting to explore is this, uh, this difference between the, the more egg shape and then the more angled shape mm. um, because it's also a, a compromise between manufacturing processes that you have available and I suppose with the more angled shape it is easier uh, and Ali was saying you go into the Very forest you find a tree that yeah. has that angle and it's easier to find a tree like with an angle rather than this kind of sweeping curve when we're thinking about making this out of plastic, we're exploring processes uh, like bending and like modular molds where we're trying to 
sort of mathematically simplify the hull shape and so we can reuse different parts of mold for different sections yeah. and so i guess the first thing is answering the question which shape is better mm. um, and then weighing it up with the manufacturing processes that we have available to pick the best thing for my, for my thinking i think the shape we have it i think is good for for jumping on the water i mean escaping the waves and uh, going fast yeah but for loading I don't think it's uh, convenient so much mm -hmm. for loading and because it's easy to, to run, to yeah. turn up. So the first thing we can do is, is using the max, so using the computer model is very quick. So we can use that to very quickly look at different shapes and, and you could look at that statically in terms of its, like you say, stability, like where the weight goes. Like yeah. if you're losing volume out the stern, then where's it going to go and how's that going to change the... The, or maybe the enlarging the width, uh, extending the width, or bring up the height more, yeah. sharpening mm -hmm. down, all this will be up to you. Yeah. And then it would be amazing oh. if we could then print a new stern, plug yeah. it onto the model, because then effectively you get the same measure. And you can say, and then resistance, it would be very interesting. Um, to yeah, so super interesting to see that and to just be connected to people and professions like that and get their input. But the more we were working on in the 3D model, we also saw that there is this barrier to really connect to the computer model. And it's quite difficult with the computer model to get the local craftsmen and boat builders and knowledge involved, which is super important. So we decided to take the same model to also build a local, more tangible version. this I love this shape you know <laughs> I don't know why so nice put this like that interesting <laughs> interesting yeah nice round yeah the dough is on the ground now it's a full load and now the water comes it's done okay it can come <laughs> it's safe yeah it's safe so now we have all the ribs laid out and we are going to glue the ones which belong together. But this is plastic. Plastics 
to have a good, good mind and to have to look after this trunk. We want to travel a long journey. Yeah. And so we want to build a big, so we have to make something. Very strong. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Muhimu salama. Muhimu salama. Safety first. As you can see, this is just a start, but it already was super useful to get a better feeling for how everything comes together. And without even asking for it, local like Dao experts like Hassan can really just come around and engage in the process and share their, their expertise. Now from both models, we definitely learned that we will work more on the hull shape to be sure that it's a really safe and stable one to go on the long flip-floppy journeys. And as a next step into that direction, we want to get another variation of a traditional Dao. So luckily we have Uta Madoni here, a very um, traditional design of a sailing dhow, which they are currently rebuilding, so we have the chance to go inside and measure it um, and that, so that we can then make a 3D model out of this design and compare it to our other home design. So we took a lot of measurements of lengths and angles and transferred them into our CAD software. And out of all those measured points, we managed to get a model which actually looks very much like Uta Madoni. So this now can be the comparison model and help in the process of defining the final design. Okay, so these um, prototypes we will be an ongoing project. Um, we'll do more tests and just also finish them. So we'll add some interior and, um, and just add the parts. So stay tuned. And if you have any ideas what kind of detail you want to have on the boat, um, let us know. Maybe your idea will travel with us around the world. Have a good time. Bye. <laughs> because without environment, clean environment, we are not good health enough. Yeah. Yeah. So we come together to do these things and we shall see. We succeed. We succeed. Yeah. Are you looking forward to sailing on the flip floppy Cuba? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we want to build and to sail around the world. Okay. Yeah. And where is your favorite place on the boat? If we're sailing, where do you want to be on the boat? To the front of the boat. On the yeah, front of the yeah, boat. Yeah, to the front to make a sail, to make to see what is going on, to see the sea, to reach the people, to make announcement, come together. Do together, this is my part. Sour. Yeah. Asante sana, yeah, Asante. Thank you.